cancer is spreading its claws across the globe. Truly said, this one particular disease is nothing less than a pandemic. That has necessitated more research into cancer. Countries as well as companies, venture capitalists as well as scientists, all are jumping into cancer research. Cancer research is going to be a very big thing in the future because earlier cancer used to be used to get detected in only high profile cases or some rich people but now that with the advent of more advanced diagnostic tools cancer is getting detected in middle class as well as lower end of the society also and now the need is being felt to do more research on cancer and make cancer uh, therapies much more affordable and that is where Cancer research is coming up in front of biotechnologists as a newer avenue for research. So in this video, we are going to discuss how can you transition yourself from a bachelor's degree holder or a undergraduate student to a cancer researcher who can actually create solutions for the world. Just to um, dedicate this video, I am dedicating this video to one of my dear friend who lost his mother because of cancer very recently. And I know the pain he went through or his mother went through. So I'm dedicating this video to all those cancer, cancer patients who deserve better treatment. And uh, let's start the video now. Now, the first thing which will come in your mind is, okay, if I'm an undergraduate, so what exactly should be my focus area? What, what topics I should study or what um, you know, subjects I should pay more focus? So first thing is, of course, biochemistry. That's a core. Molecular biology. And genetics. So these are the three areas where you have to pay attention when you are in your bachelor's. Okay. Now, always try to do your bachelor's from, from some well-reputed uh, college because infrastructure really matters, faculty really matters. And if you're not getting a good college, okay, even if you took admission in a mediocre college, keep updating your knowledge by attending a lot of workshops and seminars and webinars and uh, reading a lot of research papers and all. So uh, some of the good institutions which where you can try out is, uh, you know, Indian Institute of Science, uh, in the, uh, IIT, um, IICR. So all these uh, are great places. Um, JNU, uh, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, that is, that is TIFR, Delhi University. So all these are very good. In fact, SRM is also there. And then uh, you have um, VIT, private institutions like D.Y. Patel, um, Nirma University. So all these universities are good. Uh, Amrita University. So you can try out in all of these places to you, do your bachelor's. And if you're not getting in these also, no problem. At least wherever you are studying, focus more on molecular biology, biochemistry and genetics because that's going to be your future uh, career. After that, once you've finished your bachelor's, try for uh, some central university or some kind of entrance exam and, uh, you know, get into a specialization. Like if you're getting somewhere master's in cancer biology, that will be great. Even if you're not getting, you can still do a broad degree biotechnology, which can be a safe degree. And you can try out in, um, you know, institutions like NCBS. National Center for Biological Sciences. You can also try for Tata Memorial Center, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, that is AIMS, and University of Hyderabad. So these are some places where you have MSc in, um, and a lot of cancer research is also going side by side. So you can jump in there and try your masters over there. Now, again, if you're not getting your masters in these, you can always go for the private universities where a broad degree is provided, doesn't matter, as long as you're strengthening your core skills in biochemistry, molecular biology, and um, genetics that's sufficient now side by side you can also do some projects part-time summer internships or dissertations in cancer biology in various labs private or government doesn't matter but as long as you're learning that's important and then so uh, once you're done with your master's uh, during the gap period while you will be preparing for say cyanide exam you can also gain some research experience by doing some cancer research projects and this can be either side by side to your master's or after your master's while you are you know preparing for csi net uh, and you can always do that with biotechnica so now uh, which all places you can do your research the cancer research uh, temporary research projects so i'll tell you of uh, the first one can be tata memorial center then you have national cancer institute then rajiv gandhi center for biotechnology then center for cellular and molecular biology ccmb 
and then you also have C camp. So all these places, there, there is a lot of cancer research going on and you can do your projects, the temporary projects over there as a JRF or SRF. Now that you have gone, got a bit of knack of how things work, in the meanwhile, crack your CSIR net and then go for a PhD. Now, if you're not able to crack CSIR net, you can always go for a abroad PhD also in cancer biology because you have a research experience now in cancer biology and uh, but there also you have to qualify the ILTS and, and TOEFL scores you, you'll be required for a PhD abroad and then you need to uh, grab a scholarship over there so don't go abroad without a, uh, without a scholarship but yeah PhD in cancer biology now you have to start now whenever you're starting your PhD in cancer biology there can be three or four approaches it can be on the drug delivery side it can be on the uh, how the cancer forms and spreads and it basically we're talking about the biochemistry of cancer, the molecular biology of cancer, genetics of cancer and uh, the delivery of cancer drugs. These are some broad areas I'm telling you. So you can choose any of these as your area of specialization and then you can do some further research. Now you have to remember this that your research should be close with the industry. It's not that okay you, you do cancer research so you are employable. You have to uh, make sure that what is the research approach happening in the industry or will be the future research approach in the industry. Similar approach you have to follow in your PhD and always look for some guide, project guide or a PhD guide who can really help you in this particular domain because everything depends on uh, master, uh, PhD. So bachelor's and master's were just foundation. PhD is what will transform you from a regular person to a cancer biologist. Apart from that, you have to read a lot of uh, research papers, attend a lot of conferences and workshops. And of course, Biotechnica is always there to help you. You can do a lot of certification program. I'll just tell you one incident which happened today. So today morning, there, there was, um, um, you know, somebody enrolled into a vaccine biology certification course on Biotechnica's platform. And I was like, okay, looks like a regular uh, admission. But when I saw the email ID, the person who enrolled into our uh, vaccine biology certification course is the head of um, uh, one of the department, HOD of one of the department of animal cell or something in Boringer Ingelheim, which is one of the largest and biggest biotech companies in the world. And he has 17 plus years of experience. So you can imagine if such a person can go back and, uh, you know, try to learn about a new thing, you, you always have to. So you can always look forward to newer things which you can learn and relearn and unlearn. So that's one thing we should know. So, and then you have to publish a lot of papers in cancer biology so that you build a reputation of yours as a cancer biologist. Now that you have done all of this, you have, uh, you have followed all the recipe, comes the postdoctoral tra training. So you have finished your PhD now. You have two options. You can either go for a job or a postdoctoral training. I will still suggest a postdoctoral training won't harm, especially in US, because if you go there for a year or two or at least three years, you get the exposure and then when you come back to India, you can probably start your own lab or you can start your own company or join some big company or a startup as a chief scientific officer. So that is where, you know, you start your career at a great place, right? So that's something we should know. So the number, the name of the institutions, which uh, I would like to mention in this video of where you can do your research is Tata Memorial uh, Center uh, for Research, Cancer Research, and then you have NCBS, then you have RGCB. Then CCMB Hyderabad, AIMS uh, Delhi. Then you have Institute of Bioinformatics and Bio Biotechnology in Pune, Pune University. Then you have Cancer Research Institute, ACTREC, that is Advanced Center for Treatment, Research and Education in Cancer. Then you have National Cancer Institute, Haryana. And then you have in Institute of Life Sciences, Bhuneshwar and National Institute of Immunology, that is in New Delhi. So these are the 10 institutes where you can pursue your cancer research. Now, while you're doing all of this, you have to know that the world of research is transitioning with the advent of AI. So it won't harm you to implement AI in your particular career. That's one thing. Implement technology into your, your research, then collaborate as much as you can. You know, collaboration gives you wing. When you collaborate with experts, their expertise comes together and becomes highly valuable. Now, next will be join uh, cancer research related societies and groups on LinkedIn. Then some actionable insights will be applied for grants and fellowship while you are, you know, in your master's for uh, your cancer research. You can also keep an eye on Biotechnica because whenever we 
conduct any kind of event which is related to cancer and even if it is not related to cancer you should still attend because that is where you learn a newer perspective from a newer person and I believe this is the most amazing thing which you can do in today's world and of course you must develop two soft skills definitely one is communication skills and then second is teamwork team working skills if you have these two you can do amazing job now remember one thing cancer biology uh, is based on a disease called cancer and cancer are of multiple types it is malignant dormant various types of cancer into various organs and it is life threatening and a lot of people are losing their lives and families are getting devastated because of cancer so if you join or make a career in cancer research you're not just pursuing a career you are giving life to someone you are saving life of someone even though you probably will never meet that person and that's amazing superpower according to me you know why I make so many videos even though very less people will watch my video but I still make them because I know somewhere someone's life will get transformed and that's my goal if I'm able to transform one person's life my job is done the same way as a cancer researcher if you are able to save one life also in your lifetime I would say your research is worth it so with these thoughts thank you so much for watching it's time to transition yourself from a regular student to a transition transformed a complete cancer researcher cancer biology is going to be a challenge for humanity if you can solve it you can be the billionaire cancer researcher in this world thank you so much see you soon in the next one till then keep shining bye bye